Hello once again, my name is Alex Dreyer and this is Championship Bridge. And as always, we have two pairs of bridge experts. They play against each other, rubber bridge, for cash awards under the rules of contract bridge. Now here's the man who knows bridge like you know the palm of your hand, the man who this week, fortunately, for all of us, will enjoy a vista of pulchritude, and you'll see why in a moment. Here is Charlie Gorin. And now one of the youngest and certainly one of the prettiest bridge players in America today, Miss Carol Ross of Detroit, Michigan. She won the national mixed pairs in 58 and became a life master in 59. And in case you're wondering, she also plays excellent golf and has a 12 handicap. Carol's partner, Bert Labar from Palm Beach, Florida. Bert has won the national team of four, the mixed team of four, and the men's pairs. All this accomplished during his very busy career as a former sportscaster and our TV and radio station owner in Palm Beach. And back for the fourth straight week in Championship Bridge is Peter Leventritt. Peter, who operates the card school in New York City, is presently a member of the fabulous Goran team of four. His partner, Harold August, has been playing bridge for at least 25 years and has won most of the coveted bridge titles. He is also an ardent sportsman and a director of the famous Cavendish Club in New York. It's easy to see, Carol, that you're one of our younger generation. I'd like to know how long you've been playing bridge. Just about four years now. And it seems to me a couple of years ago you won the national championship for mixed pairs. Yes, I did. You must have been in your swaddling clothes then. Oh, well, it was a great thrill. As for you, Bert, how long have you been playing? Well, uh, more than four years. Something like 44? Close to it. <laughs> Bert, uh, I understand now you're operating a TV station in Palm Beach and that you carry this show. That's right, WATTV is mighty proud to carry the program. Well, we're glad to have you, and I'd like to know, do the cameras still make you nervous? Oh, they sure do, and I'd be even more nervous with the combination of the cameras and the tenseness of this match is coming up, but on the other hand, playing opposite a girl as pretty as Carol is very soothing on the nerves. It certainly is. Oh, thank you. Well, Bert, we all came here to have a contest of some kind, so let's get to it. In the meantime, good luck to you all. Thank Thanks, you, Charlie. Thank Thanks you. a lot, Charlie. And now, in order to play championship bridge on television, we observe these basic rules. We play rubber bridge, and to the team scoring the greatest number of points over the half-hour period, we provide $1,000, $500 to the losers, and we have bonus money for slams bid and made. The winners come back next week, face a new set of hopefuls. And now, let's see what the action is this week, huh? Peter Leventritt and Harold August defending their laurels against the challenge of Bert Labar and Carol Ross. Don't play too rough on an old teammate, old boy. The dealer, lovely Carol Ross, she is that. Former national mixed pair title holder, this girl has beauty and intelligence. Don't be in lulled into any full sense of security by this pretty girl there, please. Oh. I know her from old, I'm not lulled. <laughs> <laughs> Flattery will get you almost anywhere. <laughs> She'll make a beautiful and intelligent one club bid, Alex. Thank you, Del Cal. I'm the dealer. One club. Well, here we go, and here's Peter Leventritt, former president of the American Contract Bridge League. Will he enter the auction, Charlie? He can overcall if he chooses. He has the necessary assets. One spade. Tournament veteran Bert Labar, his partner Carol Ross, has opened the bidding with one club. Labar, of course, does not have the requirements for a free raise. No, he doesn't. Pass. Harold August, his partner has overcalled one spade. Say, that's three, seven, nine, fourteen high card points there. Yeah, well, Harold has a delicate choice here. Mm hmm. Possibly a jump bid in spades. Four spades. Hey, Charlie, that's not a jump, that's a leap. Could he have bid no trump? I approve of four spades, Alex. No trump would be somewhat treacherous with his heart and club holding. Oh, I'll see. And there's reason to believe his partner has a fairly good spade suit. Mm -hmm. Now, Carol Ross, she opened the bidding with one club, but the opponents have stolen the ball at four spades. What can she do, Charlie? <laughs> for all her charm, there's nothing for her to do but pass. Pass. Leventritt, his partner, leaped to four spades. Pass. Hurt Labar. Pass. Say, how about that bidding, Charlie? Pretty good. Carol Ross has a standard, old-fashioned American club bid which sometimes appears to have disappeared from modern life. Peter Leventritt overcalled with one spade. This may seem daring to many of the viewers, 
but the team of Leventritt and Ogus do not react favorably to staying out of the auction. Labar, of course, passed, and August was now faced with a touchy problem. Even though his partner, Leventritt, might have an indifferent spade overcall, an effort should be made to reach a game contract, and August decided that since it was quite apparent that there were not enough high cards around the table to mark Leventritt with a sound hand, his bid must have been based on distribution. He therefore went straight to game in spades, an aggressive bid that will require some delicate handling. My lead, Peter. Yes, sir. This is Bert Labar's hand on lead against four spades. He selects the juice of clubs, his partner's bid suit, and August tables the dummy. Heavy, Harold. Well, heavy in certain <laughs> respects and light in others. That's a very good description of sir. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather have another trump for you. I appreciate your thought. Peter Leventritt, the seasoned pro, has a four spade contract to manipulate here. Thank you, Pot. You're welcome. Leventritt now plays dummy six. Carol Ross tosses her jack, gets higher than Leventritt singleton seven. Carol returns the king of clubs. Leventritt trumps it with a low spade. Will he pull Trump next, Charlie? I think not. I rather believe he'll try to set up a heart rough and dummy, Alex. All right, let's see if he agrees with you. Yes, he does. He leads a low heart. Labar follows. Dummy's queen is played, and Carol Ross takes the second trick for the defense with her ace. And Carol returns a low heart. Leventritt the deuce. Labar follows low. Dummy wins with the remaining king. This is Paul Spain's, remember. Trumps are now Leventritt's concern, and so he leads Dummy's king. Carol gives up the ten. Declare Leventritt low, and Labar follows. Three tricks are home for Peter, who now continues Trump's leading dummies free. There's Carol's Jack. Leventritt commits his queen. A ten spades frighten Slightly nervous, nerve-wracking. <laughs> Does he want the one Trump still held by the opponents? No, he plays his last heart. I see Charlie is going to trump this losing heart with dummy's remaining spade. Well, this will be his fifth trick, and a successful full spade contract is another five tricks away. Now Peter switches to diamonds for the first time, leading low from dummy. Carol plays low. Leventritt's missing the king, jack, ten. This is a critical play coming up, Alex. He tosses the seven. It forces Labar's king. Hmm. Looks like he made a good guess. Business picked up. A big league play by Leventritt. I'll discuss it at the end of this hand. All right, defense has their book against four spades. Labar returns a heart. Dummy sheds a club. Carroll also pitches a club, and Peter trumps with his spade eight. He has his book. Remember, this is four spades, and defense has their book. He needs the rest. Now Peter wants that one trump still out, so he cashes his ace of spades. There it is, Labar's nine. Now, eleven crits problem. Have now disappeared, Alex. I should say. He looks relieved, Charlie. Leventritt returns a low diamond. Labar the four. Well, it looks like the diamonds are going to divide. Dummy's ace, and there's Carroll's ten. That should just about be the ball game. And I have two high diamonds. Very nicely played, Pete. Thank Charlie, you. what about Leventritt's handling of the diamond suit, huh? A trick eight. Leventritt faced up to his problem in the diamond suit. He held four diamonds to the queen. Bert. Dummy held four diamonds to the ace. Bert Labar held the doubleton king, and Carol Ross, the opening club bidder, held the jack, ten, and three. The defense already had two tricks, and Leventritt must restrict his losers and diamonds to one trick if he is to make his four spade contract. Up to this point, Peter Leventritt had ascertained from the play that Carol Ross had the ace, king, jack of clubs, the ace of hearts, and the jack of spades, a total of 13 points. In attempting to locate the king of diamonds, Leventritt recognized that if that card were also in Carol Ross's hand, she would have a point count of 16 and would probably have opened the bidding with one no trump instead of one club. He therefore decided to play Mr. Labar for the king and hoped it would fall no later than the second round.
Accordingly, at trick eight, Leventritt led a small diamond from Dummy. Carroll played the three. Peter put up the seven, which actually forced Labar's king. Peter's queen and the balance of his diamond suit were now happily secure. Well done, Peter Leventritt. Harold August receive 120 below for a game on their successful full spade contract, and they are vulnerable as we go on to hand two of championship bridge. Well, Pete, we drew first blood. Let's keep it up. Still a very fine guess, Peter, and don't do it again. <laughs> sure was. Peter Leventritt, just complimented by his opponents for his play of the diamond suit on the first hand, is the dealer. Peter operates a well-known bridge school in New York, and let's see what he's got here now, huh? 12 points, not enough to open the bidding. Oh, Alex, you forgot to add distributional points. One for each double. Oh, that's right. The true value of the hand is really 14 points. A mandatory opening. So get me the dunce cap. Yeah, I seem to have dealt. One club. Now former men's fair champion, Bert Labar. Bert has a beautiful hand, an easy heart bit, I presume. You have made an improper assumption, Alex. His hand is too strong for a mere overcall of one heart. Double? Yes, the double is quite proper. This is not the type of hand on which one would make a jump bid in hearts. All right, so I'm not picking the right horses. Now here's Harold Logus. His partner has opened the bidding with one club. He might possibly bid two clubs. That does not advertise any special strength after the double, you know. Pass. And so he decided to pass. Now here's the very lovely Carol Ross. Gosh, she's pretty. Her partner has doubled the opening club call, asking her to bid. She'll show her major suit, of course. One heart. Leventritt, who opened the club, his partner has passed. Now let's see what Peter will do after partner's discouragement. One spade. I approve. At this level, there is no great risk. And here's a thoughtful Labar. Partner responded to his takeout double in hearts. Say he likes hearts, that's his best suit. But Bert has a free and easy three heart raise now. Mm -hmm. Four hearts. Hey, did he leap overboard, Charlie? It's a bit bold. Remember his double forced partner to bid. And as far as he's concerned, partner may have nothing but four little hearts. All right, here's August. Pass. Carol Ross, her partner leaped to game in hearts. Is she apprehensive? I pass. A discouraged Peter Leventritt. I pass. Review that bidding for us, huh, Charlie? Leventritt opened the bidding with one club. Labar had a sound takeout double. Carol Ross responded dutifully with one heart. Peter now quite properly took occasion to show his major suit at the one level by bidding a spade. Labar's next bid was a leap to four hearts. This is a slight exaggeration of his values. It is my practice after having doubled, never to jump to any contract I cannot expect to fulfill in my own hand. Now let's watch the play. All right, Carol Ross is in the driver's seat this time with a four heart contract on her hands. That uh, makes it my lead. And we are looking at Peter Leventritt's hand. He's fingering the opening lead. It's the 10 of diamonds and Bert Labar tables the dummy. She sure picked out the right suit for it, didn't she? That she did. Let's watch the play through the eyes of Declara Carol Ross. And she calls for the ace. August tosses the deuce. And Carol the six. She's going after Trump's immediately. There's Dummy's ace. And what problems lie ahead for her, Charlie? Well, how to avoid two club losers and two spade losers. That's her problem, Alex. Well, I'm glad it's not mine. All right, Carol continues with Trumps leading dummies five. There are two Trumps still out. There's one from August. Carol goes up with her queen. And there's the last one, Leventritt's ten. Carol now leads a low diamond. This is four hearts, remember? Carol hopes to establish a diamond in her hand and discard one of dummies losing clubs on it, Alex. All right, dummies queen wins Carol's fourth straight trick. It's four hearts, remember? And diamonds are continued from dummy. Will they break? August cooperates with the jack. Carol cashes her king. Hey, Leventritt shows out. No break here for Carol Ross. And not very chivalrous of August to still hold the high diamond. Carol looks a bit downheartened here. 
She plays her last diamond anyhow before Leventritt sheds the club. Dummy roughs with a heart. She'd have loved to slough a club. August gives up his seven. Carol now leads a low club from Dummy. August covers with the jack, gets too big for Carol. While defense has its first trick, they need three more to set this contract. August continues clubs leading the king, and Carol, a lady in distress, helplessly follows with her last club. Well, she couldn't do anything about her two club losers. Now let's see how the spades break for her. And right now, too. August tests Carol with the ten of spades. What's the matter, honey? She has three spades to the jack in her hand and three spades to the king and dummy. What will she do? Well, she covers with her jack. Leventritt inserts his queen, and Carol handles it with dummy's king. She must lose two spades. Yes, she concedes the two spades now and claims the last two hearts trumps for down one. Bad, nice try, Carol. And you made my life easy, Harold. You didn't make me make a scintillating play. Have to have two spades. Me yeah. pushing the queen aside. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't want to give you any problems. <laughs> for one gallantly setting Carol Ross one trick on her four heart contract, Leventritt and August add 50 points to their score. Third hand, Carol Ross bought a four heart contract and succeeded in making five. So she and Bert Labar have all but tied this match with 120 below for a game and 30 above for the over trick. Now let's go on to hand four of Championship Bridge. Well, it couldn't be much closer, Peter. Right down to the wire again. 20 big points we got on you. Remember that. I remember. Can lovely Carol Ross here and Bert Labar overcome that 20 point lead? Harold August, the dealer. Let's see, six, nine, ten points with distribution, far short of the requirements for an opening bid. Pass. Over to Carol Ross. Gosh, she's easy to look at, but her cards aren't very attractive, not a very formidable hand. Pass. Lecturer and teacher, Peter Leventritt. His partner is fast. You know, Peter told me the killer instinct is a very important asset in competitive play. Well, he won't kill anything with this hand, but those miserable cards may give him murderous thoughts. I pass. It's been passed around to Burton Labar. Well, here we go, huh, Charlie? Labar has 21 high card points. Actually, one shy of the requirements for a two-no trump bid. Furthermore, one is reluctant to open two-no trump with an unprotected suit. Yes, he has only a double and 10 of diamonds. One heart. Now, August, he dealt and passed. He sees a slim lead of 20 points in this match threatened by Labar's one heart bid. What about that, Charlie? Yes, Alex. Harold may enter the auction just to stir things up a bit. One no trump. Throwing a bit of dust, huh? All right, here's Carol Ross, her partner open with one heart. Carol has four of partner's heart suit, and you will notice also the king jack of diamonds. That's all. Let's see what she does. Two hearts. Poor Peter in that bankrupt hand of his. I pass. Now, Labar, he opened one heart. Partner responded, two hearts. Is he thinking of slam now, Charlie? No, Alex. Remember, his partner passed originally. Labar knows that his partner's two heart response is not robust. Mm -hmm. Or if partner had strength, she would have doubled the one no trump overcall. Right, and two hearts will win the match for Labar and Carol Ross. Pass. Here's Harold. He overcalled one no trump. It would be criminally reckless for him to compete further, Alex. Pass. And he sees it your way, Charlie, but he's not happy. Labar in fourth position opened the bidding with one heart. It is somewhat more normal with his strong holding to open with a club, making it easier for partner to respond at a low level. But I have no quarrel with a heart bid here, for if Labar anticipates a battle from his opponents, he is suggesting to partner his preference for a heart lead over any other. August, realizing a plus score by either side would ensure victory, tried to forestall disaster by bidding one no trump. Carol Ross, who had passed originally, routinely raised to a mile two hearts. And Bert Labar, realizing that a slam was not within reach, saw no point in carrying on. Bert Labar has a two-heart contract here. That's all he needs to cinch the match, and I'll be anxious to see if he can make slam with that monster of a hand of his. August will make the opening lead. 
You're a big help. Thank you. He, he's complained to a passing partner, and Carol Ross is enjoying That's it. my lead. Mm -hmm. All right, we're looking at Harold Augustus cards, and he's pondering his opening lead. It's the Eight of the Hearts trumps. Well, good luck, partner. Thank you. And Carol Ross tables her dummy. It's not very much, is it? No, sir. And here's a thoughtful declarer, Bert Lamar. Bert selects dummies, smallest trump. Peter Leventritt contributes meekly, and Lamar will take this with the king. Now, will Lamar be sorry he didn't try for the slam bonus? Well, we'll soon know. Bert now leads a diamond. August climbs on it with his ace. Dummies nine is played by Labar. Well, that's one trick for the defense, and I would say the play at the clubs will determine whether there's slam here or not. August exits with a small trump. Say, Charlie, Bert Labar considers that the essence of a successful bridge partnership is the need for the partners to understand each other's bids. It's that simple. That's very true, Alex. Bert wins his second trick, and there's only one trump still out. The question, will the bar make a slam? Bert now leads a low diamond. August plays the four. Labar finesses for the queen with dummies jack, and it wins. Well, now it's just a matter of locating the king of clubs, and Bert looks like he's about to pick up the marbles. Well, I know there's another trump out, but in view of the score, we make four, probably five, and if the king of clubs is right, we probably possibly make six. You're only going to make five, Bert, because five, king oh, five. five. King Every set to ride. So Congratulations. Thank you, dear. Congratulations. Thank you, dear. the match, Peter. Very good. Congratulations, Thanks, Thank you, Peter. And in a moment, a bridge tip from Charles Goran. Well, for bidding two hearts and making five, Labar and Carol Ross receive 60 below, plus 90 above for the Overtrix, plus 50 for an unfinished part score. Labar was right to stop shy and slam, Charlie. Leventritt and August have a total of 170, but it is surpassed by the 350 for Ross and Labar, our new champions, and to them, our warmest congratulations. And so we have a new set of winners, Carol Ross and Bert Labar. And once again, with the winning bridge tip, here's Charles Goran. You will recall that on hand two, Leventritt opened the bidding with one club. Labar doubled, and Carol Ross responded with one heart, whereupon Labar jumped to four hearts. Now the fact that they incurred a penalty of 50 points is not very important, but a principle of bidding is involved here. Now here's what his hand looked like. When you have doubled and forced partner to bid, it's up to you to pull your punches on subsequent rounds. A jump to three hearts by Labar would have been quite adequate. The moral is this, if you are the doubler, you should underbid on subsequent rounds. If you are the responder to the double, you should overbid vigorously at every possible opportunity. And now this is Alex Dreyer and Charles Goran saying goodbye and wishing all of you Grand Slams from Championship Bridge. Official championship bridge furniture provided by Schwader Brothers. Bicycle playing cards, the official playing cards of championship bridge. And we wish to thank the U.S. Playing Card Company for helping us to produce championship bridge.